It's a pleasure having you again, my friends, here on Will Edutech. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the solutions to question 51 and 52 on the May 2012 CSEC math exam. And that's your multiple choice paper. Now here it states, item 51 refers to the arrow diagram below, which shows a function. And here we have our diagram. Here we have the function. For example, in the, in the, to my extreme left here, I have my x values, my domain values, okay, and to my, which is mapping onto my y values, and these y values are called the range values, okay? Now, if you should notice carefully, this is a one-to-one -one function. For example, I have one x value mapping onto one y value, and the arrowhead show you the direction that that mapping is taking place. Okay, now in 51, they're asking which of the following best describes the function. Now, le let's quickly look at this. Now, if you notice in the first option, option A that they gave us. Okay, guys, option A, this is saying y is equal to x. So obviously, if y is equal to x, then any, any value that y takes, x must take that, that same value. Now, if you look at the function that they give you, when x is 2, y is 5 y and x values are different. For example, in the second case, when y, when x is 5, y is 8, okay? So obviously, if you should continue along that path, you'd realize that y is not equal to x, okay? So we can rule out that option by a process of elimination. Now let's move quickly to option B. If you notice in option B, x is the subject here, okay? They have it here as x is equal to y plus three, okay? Now note, whenever we have a function working with, x cannot be the subject, x is the domain value, okay? Y must always be the subject. So in this case, this also would be incorrect, okay? Because um, our function must state f of x, g of x, or y is equal to some expression in x. Now let's look at option C. In option C here, they're saying, uh, and let's just make a quick note, f of x. Let me use another color quickly. Now they're saying here, f of x, f of x is equal to x plus 3. Now what this is simply saying, if I should take here, if you notice, y is the subject because f of x is the same as y. So this is y. So we are all good with this. Now if you should notice, my friends, if I should take an x value and substitute it, let's take the first one. Let's take f of 2. Okay. And by f of 2, I mean I'm taking the 2, the x is 2 here in the first case. And I should substitute it here. Then 2 plus 3 would be equal to 5. And if you notice, um, the y value that corresponds with the x value when x is 2 is 5, okay? So that is correct. Let's check another one, okay? Just to ensure that we are on the right path. Let's check f of, let's check the second value when f is 5, when x is 5 rather, okay? So let's check when x is 5, this should be equal to x plus 3. Now let's substitute the value of x in this case, x is 5, so 5 plus 3, that is equal to 8. Okay, my friends, so obviously we have gotten again the corresponding y value when x is 5, all right? So obviously option C is the correct option, and let's just, let's just tick it quickly. Option C would be the correct option, okay? So hence we could always rule out uh, option D also because in a function you can't have two y values. If you notice this is saying y is equal to y plus 3. Okay, can't have two y values there. So obviously that would be ruled out. Let's move on to question 52. Now in question 52 it says here a boat was traveling on a bearing of 270 degrees. In what direction was it traveling? East A, B West, C North, D south. Okay. Let's just establish some, some very important concepts as it relates to bearing. Let's say we have a point P. Okay. So here is my point P. Let me label it P. Now, for when working with bearing, uh, you're at a point. This is your starting point. Okay. This is where you're starting from. Now, basically what I'll be doing to measure a bearing, one of the first things you ought, you, ought, you ought to do is to establish your four cardinal points, okay? So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be drawing my four cardinal points through the point P. If you notice, I'm drawing them through my point P. Let me just mark that point again. So this point here would be my point P. 
All right, now let's just put in some values quickly. Let's just put in some labeling quickly. Here to the, at the top, pointing to the top of my page, I would have my north. To my right, I would have my east. To downwards, I would have my south. And to my left, this would be my west, okay? Now, my friends, when measuring a bearing, okay, you usually start on the north line, okay? And that line is usually pointing to the top of the page. Now, you are always going in a clockwise direction, okay? Let me just change my color. So when measuring a bearing, you are going in a clockwise direction. So I'm going in, in that direction, that direction. Let me just label it there. Let me just state that out. I am always moving in a clockwise direction. Okay, my friends? So that, that's the direction. Now, if you notice, if this is north, north, this is my, this is my starting point. So obviously this would be zero, zero. And if you notice, I have three zeros. Okay. And what this, what these mean, what this means rather is that when measuring a bearing, you usually use three digits to represent a bearing. Okay. So now I'm moving in a clockwise direction. So if I move from north, to south obviously well this angle here would be north to east rather uh, this angle here would be a 90 degree angle so obviously uh, from north to east would be zero nine zero and remember we always use three digits when representing a bearing now if I should move further and move from north north to, to south then obviously if you notice this is a straight line my friends from north to south is a straight line so obviously this would be 180 degrees angles on a straight line sum to 180. now if i should move again from south and i'm coming around to west then obviously this would be 270 degrees and likewise if i should complete the turn and end up back where I started from, meaning on my north line, then obviously this would be a complete revolution, meaning I would have turned through an angle of 360 degrees. Now, basically what they're asking here, if a boat was traveling on a bearing of 270 degrees, in what direction was it traveling? So if, if, if the boat started at the point P and it's traveling on a bearing of 270 degrees, it simply means it's starting from the north line and it's going around, okay? And it's not stopping until it has stopped on the line that measures 270 degrees, if you notice. So obviously the boat would be traveling in a westerly direction, okay? Or it is going west, and that would be option B. Okay, my friends, I'll see you in the next videos when we'll be looking at questions 53 and 54.